here's our little roadmap for what we're gonna do with this, okay? For starters, we're just going to use Excel, we're gonna use the spreadsheet, to work out all of the things we've been calculating over the little bit uh, recently, expected value, uh, variance, standard deviation, all that. But then importantly, what we're gonna do is some analysis of what happens when we change these values, when we muck about with them, what we expect to be the results, and then what the results end up being, okay? So let's begin. To work out any of these things down the bottom, like standard deviation, for example, we need to start with expected value. Can someone tell me, when we've got a data set, what is the general process that we go through when working out expected value? It's a bunch of things to add up, right? What do we add up? What do, you, what do you reckon, Ernest? You can, you can use your book, by the way, for this. I just want to get your recall on this, okay? There's a series of things, that's why we used our sigma notation. Series of things we want to add up, Will? Take the variable and times it by the chance, and then you add them all together. Fantastic, that was textbook, right? Take the variable, right? You can see a whole bunch of them here. You multiply it by the chance that it will happen, and then once you've got that, you, you just add all of those up, right? Now, when you have a look at this, right, um, there's no frequency table here. So what do you expect each of these heights, that's what these are, how many times do you think each one comes up? Exactly once, right? Now, if you've got Excel open like me, if you've got Google Sheets or something comparable, it'll look a little different. But what I want you to do is just highlight all of the piece of data there. Um, if yours is like me, mine's actually gone off the screen here, but like just here, Underneath, uh, mine says count. In fact, I'll just make the window a bit smaller so you can see. Hold on. There we go. Can you guys see right there? It says count, and then there's a colon and it says nine, right? So there are nine scores at the moment, nine heights. So therefore, what would you think, what would you infer is the probability of each of these values? It's one out of nine, right? A ninth, okay? So here's what we're going to do. To get this expected value, I want to take... Uh, and I'm going to write equals here because I'm going to start a calculation now that indicates to your spreadsheet you want it to calculate some stuff. I want to add up each of these, but each one multiplied by a ninth. Do you agree with that? Each one of them, they all have the same probability. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that probability, one out of nine. Okay. Um, there's no division button on our keyboard, so we've got to use that slash, make sure it's heading in the right direction. And then what we multiply that by, we don't again have a multiply symbol, so I'm going to use the asterisk just above the 8, is all of these probabilities, sorry, all these values added together. Okay? Now, we could just type those in, 1.64 plus, 1.67 plus, and so on, but we don't need to, we've got a spreadsheet. So type in the letters S-U-M for sum, open a parenthesis like so, and then it says, Excel or spreadsheet saying to you, okay, well what numbers do you want the sum of? Okay? Watch this part carefully, look at my uh, mouse cursor, right? All I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight, I'm going to hold down my mouse cursor all the way down, and then I'm going to let go. And you can see that Excel sort of fills in all of the stuff that I wanted. I'm going to close that bracket. I'm just going to, before I hit enter, I'm just going to leave that there so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to tell you what it's doing, right? It's saying one out of nine, that's the probability of every single one, multiplied by every single one of those values added up, okay? Have you hit enter? Did you get something? 1.6556, okay? Now, just a quick note, if yours, who has exactly that number, 1.6556? Exactly that, yep. Some people might have more digits. Um, the reason why is if I make my cells a bit wider here, it gives you more decimal places, so it just sort of truncates to be whatever you've got there. Uh, mine's a bit smaller. Okay, so I've got my expected value. Question, and again, if you wanna use your book for this, you're welcome to, how do I use the expected value to work out variance? Again, I'm adding up a bunch of things. What do I add up? Have a think. It's, it's, it's quite closely related to the expected value. I'm going to need the probability, right? What do I multiply that by? Have a think. I'm going to get this out. Wait. What am I working out? Oops. Say it again. Uh, don't worry about it too much for now. I'll show you where to find it. But for now, just write SD for standard deviation. When I'm working out my variance, right? There's a bunch of things I add up. What's going to fit in here? Who remembers? Our 1 out of 9, what does that represent again? It's the probability of each one. So I need to know that. And then I have to multiply it sort of like a big messy thing. Who remembers? So this is going to be in there, right? That's why we calculated it. What's in here? It's the, yeah, go ahead, Will. Uh, so for the first one, it would be one point six. Oh, negative 1.64. Oh, no, it would just be 1.64. Yep, good. One point, the second number. Okay, this guy, the actual value, I take away the expected value. That's the reason I calculate it. Remember that? 
take away the expected value, and then I actually have to do something to this whole thing, which is I square it. Can you remind me again why we're squaring? Two yeah, I'm like, I'm not interested in whether it's positive or negative. I just want to know how much does it vary, how far away is it. So the square gets rid of that negative, okay? So what we're going to do is, there's my colors here. We're going to use these cells to do all of this grunt work for us, okay? We're going to use these cells to do that. So over here, let's work out the thing that needs to get added up for this one. It's going to be, again, type equals to start an equation. What's the probability for every single one? 1 over 9, so I'm going to write 1 over 9. Now I'm multiplying by, let's have a look, what's in here, right? So first I'm going to open a bracket and I say it's the value, in this case it's 1.64, take away the expected value, that 1.6 whatever, okay? So I could type those numbers but I don't have to, I'm just going to use my cursor, I'm going to say, whoops, sorry, that's, ah, uh, nope, let's fix that. There, if you click just on that, you'll get whatever that value is, even if it changes, and then I'm subtracting the... Expected value, yeah? So I'm just going to tap onto this cell here, and it very helpfully gives us another color so you can distinguish what's what, right? I close the bracket. What was I doing to that again? I've written it up the top. I'm squaring it. We don't have a square button. So what you want is the, um, it's the hat, which is above the 6. So that symbol there means to the power of, right? And if we're squaring, it's to the power of 2, like so, okay? So if I hit Enter, um, is this what your cell tells you. Does it look like that? With the E and all that kind of thing? Yeah? Does anyone know? If no one knows, it's fine, but I want to know. Does anyone know what that E indicates? Has anyone seen that before? It's, it's very different to the derivative, actually. Like the times 10 and then it's to the power of Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. So this E, it's shorthand. It's on your calculator as well. The capital E, not the lowercase. This is shorthand for this. 2.68861 times, as Will just said, 10 to the power of whatever number is on the end there, right? Which in this case is a negative 5. What do we call this kind of notation? We call it scientific notation, right? So I think some people call it standard notation, but scientific notation is why we've got scientific calculators. It's our way of representing really, really small numbers or really, really massive numbers, yeah? So there's just a lot of decimal places and Excel's like, forget it, I don't want to write that anymore. I'll just hand it to you like so. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to take this and add it up for every single value, okay? Not just for this one, I want to do it for all of these ones down here, okay? Now the whole idea with Excel is we can take formulas, once you've put the effort in to craft them, you can use them over and over again. Don't do what I'm about to do, just watch how I'm going to do it. I've copied that cell, that's why you can see the ants crawling around, and I'm about to paste it one cell down to try and get it to do this work for me. Is this reasonable looking? It shouldn't be. That looks like it's a, like a crazy value. It doesn't make sense. And there's a reason why. If I double click on this, you can see what's gone wrong with my formula. Do you see that? What's it trying to do? It does probability, 1 over 9. It multiplies by, and then it says, here's this value. What does it subtract, though? Zero. Yeah, this empty cell, which is 0, right? So you're like, this is not what I want it to do. So here's what I want you to do instead of my error, OK? Can you go back into this formula you just created, OK? What I want it to do is, um, I want that blue value to go down. As I go down the sheet, I want it to go down too. But the red value, B3, I want it to stay put. Yeah, does that make sense? Here's the way you do it. Put your cursor right in between the B and the 3, in that red one there, or whatever color it is for you. And can I ask you to put a dollar sign in there? Okay. That dollar sign means, hey, hold still. I want you to be locked in position. No matter where you go up and down, it's going to stay on that. Press Enter. Value hasn't changed. But now, now I do want you to do this with me. Copy that cell, and now let's, uh, let's highlight all the way down. I want it to do all these rows, and then go ahead and paste it in, okay? I'll give you a second to do that first, and then hopefully these are the values that you get. So, yeah. Uh, you're talking about this one here? What will happen is you'll get something a little bit different. So I'm just going to double click on that so you can see that. Or have a look at Ashan's is my suggestion. Oh, you don't have it yet? You don't have it yet? Okay. Let me put that there so you can see it. It should, that should, if you've typed in your data just like I have, that formula should do it for you. Okay. All right, could I get a show of hands? Who's got all these values and they match mine? Yep. Fantastic. Okay, that sounds really good. Well done. Srang, so, Ishan, are you guys good to go? Okay. I'll come back to it in a second. Okay. Now, the variance is not these individual numbers. What did I have to do again? What's that big sigma about? 
it means take the sum, add them all up, right? All these nine values, add all of them up. So where we've got variance here, type an equal sign. What was that formula I taught you for how to add stuff up? Sum, sum right? So type in S-U-M, open a bracket, and then these things up above, these are the things we want to add, yeah? So I'm just going to highlight all of them, zoop, like so. Don't forget to close your bracket. I'll just leave that there for a second so that you can see yours matches mine. Okay. Hey, Mrs. Lee. <laughs> Thank you. All right, can I hit enter? Did you get 0 0.002713? Is it, does that match with you guys? Fantastic. Okay, good.